I'm no different than any other Japanese American person here in Los Angeles. Work as an artist, run errands, and I pay my bills, just like everyone else. But sometimes, when the day is done and the opportunity arises, I open my secret little restaurant. It's there I discover who I truly am, one dish at a time. I call that place the Shokudo. Spam Usubi. We may not know what it is made from, but it just always seems to be around. Come with us as we learn how to make this truly Japanese American dish here in John Shokudo. Ikimasho! I understand. Okay. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah, I went in half and then half of the each. Of, then you have eight pieces. Oh, cool. <laughs> okay. Cool. Perfect. That's awesome. Okay. And now we'll cook them. When would you cook Spam Musubi for your family? For my, for our family, I would make it for trips usually, like fishing trips, trips up north to visit grandparents, you know, because it's real easy to eat in the car, or on the boat when we're fishing, or yeah. in line at Disneyland before all the COVID restrictions. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Other than that, we'd make it for um, potlucks, mm -hmm. or after basketball game, you know, refreshments. Everybody takes turns bringing refreshments. Mm -hmm. Kylie's hula practices, Odori mm -hmm. performances, things like that. <laughs> oh, well, that's really cool. Yeah, that's coming out good. Like wow, that. nice. I actually learned from my um, auntie in Hawaii. So oh, wow, cool. okay. So now we have, can you see that? I usually do quarter cup sugar and a quarter cup shoyu. Ooh, okay. So I already have the sugar in there. So I'll just uh, do the show you here. Probably in college or so, high school, college. Huh. Is that right? No, that's not right. That can't be right. Because we we had it when we were little in Hawaii. Mm. And she told me about it. But then I didn't learn how to make it until um, later. <laughs> yeah. And she brought me, she sent me the little mold, you know, the Spam Musubi mold and everything oh, cool. from Hawaii with uh, all the ingredients and stuff like that. And over there she'd say, she said she would do it with just um, Spam. Uh -huh. I, just, I just like to lift up the edge to make sure all the sauce gets under it. Oh, um, yes. And sometimes mm -hmm. she would fry uh, scrambled eggs, you know, in a thin layer. Right. And then cut them into the same size pieces as the spam. So you'd put uh -huh. the layer of spam and then the egg wrapped in the uh -huh. rice. So she said that's a good breakfast, you know, if you have to eat breakfast on the road. That's that, that's, that sounds like the most Hawaiian breakfast I can ever think of. Like spam, <laughs> eggs, and rice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so awesome. I spent elementary school years on Long Island in New York. And mm -hmm. it was hard. <clears throat> there's no Japanese. Well, there's no other Japanese people around at that time. And there's no Japanese grocery stores or anything. So if my mom wanted to buy that kind of stuff, she'd have to go into the city and get mm. it. So it was a treat. Um, oh. Even having takwang. I don't know. Do you know the yellow pickle? Yeah. You know? I haven't heard takwang in a long time. <laughs> that, uh -huh. We savored that like candy. We would take little bites of one piece because it was such a treat we didn't have you know that often and then when we came out to california then it was more abundant so my mom could cook it more so my parents <clears throat> my parents were born and raised in hawaii uh -huh. and um my dad wanted to fly he wanted to be a pilot he grew up on the banana farm in hawaii so in order to learn how to fly he mm -hmm. joined the air force so um, that's where he learned how to fly. And when he got out, 
of the Air Force, they wanted to go back to Hawaii. So he applied to be a pilot at Hawaiian Airlines, Aloha, but they wouldn't hire him because he was Japanese. So oh, wow. he applied at, and back then you could just say that, you know, and it wasn't a problem. So, yeah. um, so he applied at American Airlines and they mm -hmm. accepted him quickly. They, um, uh, cause he did really well in the Air Force. First stationed in Ohio. I don't remember that though. Cause I was just like under two. Oh, and then okay. he, um, got transferred to New York. So that's mm. where I grew up. Okay. I'm going to pretend like I have a sink here and I can put this into the water. <laughs> no worries. And push it down. Then I get this bam, put that in. Add a little more rice. Oh, it's forming. That's great. <laughs> And then as we were got older, they wanted to get closer to family in Hawaii. So he got transferred to San Francisco airport. So then we moved to California when I was in middle school and my dad flew out of San Francisco airport. So, oh, wow. Um, oh my goodness. Okay. So, and then we just wrap the noni around there. Finishing touches. And then I just put it on the side like this. So it kind of sticks together. <laughs> That's beautiful. Nice. Woo. Also, too, how much rice do you know how to put in, uh, you know, uh, of the spam sabi to make it that way? Um, just by feel. <laughs> I've never by measured feel. it. Yeah. Ah, uh, I see. Uh, you know, and depending on, you know, like for the grandkids, I'll yeah. put a little less rice in so it's not so huge. Yeah. And, but when the, the boys were in basketball, you know, older basketball teams, I put more rice in, you know, to make <laughs> <Yeah>. them bigger. Ah, <laughs> uh, I see. Yeah. Oh, that's perfect. See, after we make them, if you have time, you can let them cool, but I never have time. So, we would wrap them in plastic wrap to take them on the fishing trip or for the refreshments. And you just wrap them up like this. <laughs> and, oh. And then just to, oh, you know what, here. Just to make it easy to find, I kind of, you know, where to open it, I kind of yeah. make a little extra fold there. And then <gasps> like that. Oh. And then there, all set to go. <laughs> if we were doing just a platter of them for, um, potluck or something I would yeah. cut them in half so you can cut them in half just straight yeah like this you know and then stack them like this on the, oh, on okay. the plate so you can cut them like that or mm -hmm. sometimes if I want to get fancy I would do a little diagonal cut yeah down like that and then oh. they're really pretty you know yeah. Put them this way. Or oh, that's brilliant. Like that. Yeah. I never would have thought of that. That's great. <laughs> like this. Let's see. Okay, so that's the standard I'm trying to achieve. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, sounds good. Again, thank you for the demo. This is really nice that uh, you spent time uh, showing me how to make this. This is really cool. Yeah, it was fun seeing you. <laughs> No problem, no problem here. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, so. All right, thank you guys for coming. Today we are eating spam musubi, a staple in the Japanese American culture. Oh, we're familiar. Yeah, definitely. We've had our whole lives, uh, every event, party, engagement, everything. Camping trip. Camping trip. Fishing trip. Mm -hmm. Road trip. Mm -hmm. Sporting events. It was a challenge 
for me because I was learning this um, on the spot, but basically this is Luke's mom's recipe. So, um, yeah, hope you guys enjoy. It smells good. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Nice yeah. recipe. Oh, you Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you very much. much. Sports games too. Mm -hmm. Basketball games, football games. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, that's it. I've made it before. Well, the way that you did it that was different mm -hmm. was that you you were like really cooked the spam first, and then you put your kind of in at just at the end. Mm -hmm. And then again, I give it that little kick. I, I kind of dump it all in there, and you like wash the pan every yeah, time in between. Like oh, to me, I just let that thing get dirty. Yeah, all the extra flavor. Right? I would do that, but I learned from yesterday because yesterday I did do that. And what happens is, sugar is a difficult thing; it burns. So when you do that, the sugar tends to burn. And you get this like. You get nicer caramelization, but it becomes really smoky, and yeah. then it becomes a little bitter. Mm. So in this way, when you clean it off and you start fresh, and you cook it slow, mm. you don't get that burnt kind of like mm -hmm. flavor. So mm -mm. it doesn't taste burnt at all. Here's a question I have for you guys: In your guys' opinion, how far do you take the spam musubi before it becomes something else? Because a lot of people, even if you put furikake inside, they'd be like. That's not spam musubi. What did you do to my 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 child? Who says that? There's a lot of people. I had this one lady that came in sunny blue. That's crazy. And she was like, "Did you put foodie cock in this? That's not how you do it." And she they, no. she was livid. No. You know? I mean, we've been going to you know cutting them diagonally and dimming that edge and foodie cock and get a little little layer of foodie uh, cock on the edge. I mean, it's still spam musubi. There's this place, uh, East Los Musubis. Uh huh. The hot Cheeto musubi. You got what? all the types of it. Yeah. Yes. I'm not gonna be like a die on that hill and be like, no, mm -hmm. like, you, you can't have hot Cheetos. Yeah, yeah I say yeah. the more the crazier. You ever, ever see udon with like just one thing in it? Yeah, you gotta make it your own kind of thing. Mm, What's in a spam? Cool. That's what I ask you. Squirrels, oh. possums, and mice. <laughs> <laughs> Read the label. All, fo all four of them. <laughs> I feel like ramen is kind of hitting that right now. Mm. There were only a few stores back in the day, and then now it's ramen store on every corner. Yeah. They're doing all kinds of crazy things with it. I tell you what, like there's a part of me that's like, no, I wouldn't get mad. You know, they're ambassadors of our culture. It's an inclusive culture. Let everybody. In. But if I ever stepped into a musubi store and there's a bunch of howlies behind and they're like, yo, you ever had a musubi? I mm -hmm. just, Kind of walk right out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For me, I do feel the same way. If I go into a Vietnamese restaurant and it's not <gasps> run by Vietnamese people, yeah. I do feel different. And I can be biased because I am Vietnamese. I come from a Vietnamese family who immigrated here. But it's just nice. It feels like home in a sense. Yeah, yeah. And it makes that experience much better. And from a person of Vietnamese descent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That feels like home. Yeah. I feel like Vietnamese food is. A little bit different from Japanese food um, in that there's a lot of Vietnamese here that own the restaurants. Mm -hmm. But I feel like for Japanese food, yeah. there's a lot of Japanese restaurants run by non-Japanese. And so mm -hmm. I feel like I'm kind of used to... I don't eat at those places. I, I, I don't eat at them, but I know they <laughs> exist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, then that brings the question like, yeah, are we okay with allowing these people be the ambassadors of our culture? I mean, we gotta give them the benefit of the doubt that they're doing their due diligence. I say if you love it that much, that you're gonna throw your own livelihood and reputation on the line, go for it. Yeah. I'm not gonna be the police, you know, and say mm, like, no. hey, stop, stop what you're doing. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> come on, like, let's see if it tastes good. How are you gonna get this wrong? Yeah. How are you gonna get spam? There's like three ingredients. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Excluding the sauce. <laughs> Okay, I've seen Spam done in different ways. Mm -hmm. The way that we just had was Spam was sandwiched between two beds of rice and then wrapped in nori. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I've also seen it be rice on the bottom, Spam on top, and then wrapped in nori. Uh, like the fake sushi style? <laughs> I have an opinion, but it's, 
it doesn't, it's not continuous with my whole theme of like saying everything's okay. <laughs> Cause that's wrong. <laughs> I, I'm just Look, I mean like I've had that and you just close your eyes and you eat that one and you imagine, you know? It'd be imagine it in the middle. Sandwich like. Interesting you say uh, you don't like that style because at Sunny Blue we actually do that style. First thing we're going to do is let's get some rice. And I'm going to grab some of the rice using my hands. Okay, and then we're going to shape the rice. Here is the form. What we're gonna do is we're gonna add furikake, which I heard is like a no-no in some circles of spam musubi, but hey, you know, I in my opinion, I think everyone's doing it wrong, including me. So, you know, let's just enjoy the wrongness of everything, right? So I'm gonna put some furikake on this. Furikake, for those of you who don't know, it's kind of like seasoning for rice. You just put on rice and it's amazing, it's delicious. So once the furikake is on there, then we're going to get our spam. We're gonna put it on top. Then we're gonna get this guy on top. We're gonna flip and close. There you go. And that is another version of Spam Musubi. Now it's time to compare. Here we go. Mmm. I like it. It's a totally different adventure. The other one, it's very glazy, kind of crunchy. It's really, it has its own kind of crunchiness. This has a very, you can tell, like that classic deep fried crunchiness that you get when you go to like restaurants or anything. Much different. But if I had to prefer what is most appropriate to what I grew up with, it would definitely be Luke's mom's recipe. It has a little bit more Hawaiian, whereas this one, this one is a little bit less Hawaiian off the beaten path. Luke's mom's recipe is for sure super legit, so I'd have to go with that one. But nothing wrong with this. This is amazing. I'm having a good time. Thank you guys for coming to my place, for eating at the Shokudo. I hope to make many more meals. I'm super excited. Let's get into it. Yeah, it's a jit Oh, good Oh, good Thank you. Thanks again for joining us at the Shokudo, where we explore the foods that we love and remember how and why we have such strong connections to them. Thank you guys so much for watching, and if you guys like what we're doing here, please like, comment, and subscribe on this channel to keep this thing going. Mata ne! Mata ne!